Hello everyone, it's your girl Tanya. Thank you for tuning in to another chapter of Books and Brown Liquor, okay? Today's book review is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This book was everything, everything, okay? This book was so good. All right, let me just give you some little excerpts from the other authors, okay? So. A riveting, powerful love story to Black girlhood and a haunting reminder of the ways in which their innocence is often stolen. Grown exposes the underbelly of a tough conversation, providing a searing examination of misogy misogyny, rape culture, and the vulnerability of young Black girls. Never have I read a story that, was so, flaw that so flawlessly hits the highest high and lowest lows of black girlhood in pursuit of the American dream. And that's what this story is about. Our main character is Enchanted. She is a 17 year old teenager and she is a uh, aspiring singer. Clearly she has the voice of an angel. She can really, really sing. Okay, our girl can sing as they say, right? So she goes to an audition and there she catches the eye of Corey Fields. Corey Fields is described. Okay. So there are some similarities. I just have to say it. Okay. I have to say it. There are similarities between the whole R Kelly headlines. So Corey Fields is a chocolate 28 year old R and B star with a reputation for uh, his secret relationships with underage girls. So that's what this book is about. It's not the story of R. Kelly, but it's like a similar situation. We all know that story. We all know the heart the R. Kelly story. Okay. So she catches the eye of the world famous R and B Grammy award winning Corey Fields. So he says, Hey girl, I can help you make it in the music business. You have an amazing voice. You are so talented. Stick with me, kid. But from the very beginning, you can see the creepy little innuendo, innuendos that are going down. What you think is a normal conversation is basically this man grooming her from the very beginning. From the time they have their very first conversation, he kind of invades her personal space a little bit. So, you know, it always starts out small. You know, no underage romance starts with like the shit just going down off the jump, but just little by little, the creep factor is moving into the story. So she's so taken aback that Corey Fields is paying attention to her. So it's not a coincidence that, oh girl, let me give you tickets to my show. Yeah, bring your parents. And then he has a way of like, putting his number in her phone while her parents are conveniently distracted by security and stuff like that. As the reader, you're reading this and you're just like, but you can't stop reading. <laughs> the book is so well written. It's so well written. It's easy to absorb. I mean, the pages just flow by, but you see this girl just sinking into this trap, sinking into this trap. Um, it starts out sweet and playful and text messages. And you know how like when you like someone and you send them a song and then I'm gonna send you a song. Oh, I love that song. Oh my God, you hang up. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That bullshit. So she's getting caught up in it so quick before she realizes what the fuck she has gotten herself into, right? So because she is so talented, because she is so extraordinary, he makes her feel like she's the most amazing thing on earth. And I think that's what makes young girls so vulnerable. He's giving her this time and attention that young girls crave. So you don't think there's a big bad wolf behind that, you know, fuzzy little lamb. There's a big bad wolf that hasn't bared his teeth yet until you're caught up in it and you're not so close to your parents. And it's just it, reading this book, the way he just sinks his claws into her. That is the part that you're just like, oh my God. But anyway, it is a good story. And then when she realizes what she's into, there's some topics 
like I said, um, obviously she's underage. That's kind of hard to swallow, right? But then uh, when the stuff starts going down and she wants help and people don't believe her, that's the part that really, really burns. When people don't believe, oh, she was 17, but she knew what she was doing. You seen the way she be dressing how quickly people turn their back on you when some negative publicity hits or, I mean, this is a young girl and just to, to see the way her, her, her whole community just like turned on her. Okay, my bad, I'm not gonna say too much. One thing I will say is when this book talks about rape culture, what bothers me is when a woman says something happened to her, the victim is the one that always gets blamed. Well, she went here and she went there. Well, you know, the victim always gets blamed. Even though she was underage and vulnerable, she still got blamed. So one thing I want to mention in this story is um, later on in the story, there is a reference to an old uh, art piece of art from 1986. This piece of art is called The Water Bearer by Lorna Simpson. And it depicts a black woman holding a picture of water in a metal dish and then a picture of water in a, a, a plastic gallon. And there's a caption at the bottom of this painting and it reads, she saw him disappear by the river. They asked her to tell what happened only to discount her memory. The point of this is when women say something happened, whether you accuse someone of rape or anything inappropriate, whenever people ask you what happened, they always call you a liar. So like with the whole Bill Cosby thing, all these women came forward years later. The first thing people said was, well, why didn't they say anything before? Why didn't you tell anyone? So whenever a woman says something happened to me, this happened to me, that didn't really happen. But, but how do I know you ain't just me? Like, I think that's the problem with rape culture. When women tell you something happened to them only for it to be discredited and not believed. And then you get mad at women for not coming forward. <laughs> so I thought that was very important. When she put that in this story, I was like, oh my God, that is so thought provoking because it's so true. There's things that have happened to me that I felt like I'm not even going to bother because I know that I'm going to have to, no one's here to fight for me. Absolutely no one is here to fight for me. Because whenever I've tried to say, hey, this happened, he did this, you must have done something to deserve it. You don't have to be a perfect person to be a victim of a crime or an assault or whatever. You don't have to be a perfect person to say, yo, this happened to me. Can I please get some help? Okay, so that's that. Another thing I wanted to touch on is a, there's an author's note at the end. And I really, this really um, touched me. Okay, I wanna leave you with a quick author's note. If you've read Allegedly or Monday's Not Coming, you already know this book was inspired by a case. This book is not about R. Kelly, nor is it a recount of his allegations. This book is about the abuse of power. It's about the pattern of accusing grown men for their behavior while faulting young girls for their missteps. It's about the blatant criticism of girls who were victims of manipulation. It's about holding the right person accountable for the crime he committed. It's about corporations attempting to silence victims and continuing to profit off of the very monster they helped create. Mic drop. <laughs> so I don't wanna to give too much about the book. I think you get it. This book is five stars. This book is five stars. This book is five stars. It is a young adult book, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it was very impactful. It hit me right in my chest. It hit me in my heart. We need to protect our girls. Whether it's a daughter, a sister, we need to protect our girls, okay? So enough said, five stars. Thank you for watching. I wish you good reading, bye. If you wanna know who was making all that noise in the background, it's her, okay? So if you heard yelping and meow in the background, this is who it was. Look, it was you. <laughs>